everyone. Welcome. This is Kevin Nelson known as AWOL. And we're back with another making it video. This is the second one of the rainbow tubes. And here you can see that I am setting up the colors. And um, yeah, that's kind of, it's the same as the one we did previously, right? So um, it starts off with the hot colors on the left hand side and the cold colors on the right hand side. Um, that part is relatively easy. You basically are going to create two diamonds when you start this thing, then you join it. And basically it's like having a double wide and then you join it again. And that's how you get a tube. So that's the whole magic behind this. The big difference in this is when, um, we start this off the two sides the way they start it's like mirrored all right so that's kind of like the whole big gist of this is just how we change the color combinations from the first one and um, get the colors to come in towards the middle again this is made to be as simple as possible i wanted this so that beginners could give this a try all the strings just keep going in straight rows there's no crazy zigzagging or anything else for the most part you won't have to look at a pattern to make this except for maybe getting the colors arranged and assorted when you start so that's that's the big thing there um because yeah anywhere anywhere you see like here, like the, the blue had already came in, so you know the orange is going to go over top of that. And then, um, yeah, so on, so on. It, it's, it's relatively easy. Although, I did manage to make a mistake. That happens a little bit later on. You'll see it. Um, and when we get to there, I'll kind of explain how I didn't understand what was happening and then my realization and how we got back on track. But, yeah. Still, it's a very pleasant pattern. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, I think it turned out really super cool. And um, yeah, I'm quite proud of it. I think this would be a fun one. And it's really nice and big. It's chunky. So that's kind of fun. I have it in my hand. But, well, I have the other one and this one. So I can actually compare the what makes them so different. Um. This video is going to be a bit shorter because I don't show everything that I did in making this. Um, kind of felt like it didn't need to. Like it's it really just repeats itself so much that you'll get the the whole gist of it um, just from the bits that we we do have in this video. So that's the first side, and um, it just makes the diamond. Then we go to the other side sometime soon there it goes and so before we had the yellow on the left now we have the yellow on the right so this is the part that that flips it and um yeah just setting up the strings like this makes for a nice cleaner looking start it's uh it's just a nice way of getting all the strings kind of grouped together and it kind of trickles down smaller and smaller as it goes. It makes your bracelets turn out really, really nice. If you don't do this already, you should probably give it a try. It's just doing like half of a knot over the top of the others. So real simple, nothing fancy. So now you can see that the first one is starting out in the opposite direction. Um, than we did before, right? So the first one was the yellow going off to the right. Now we have the yellow going off to the left. And that's that's kind of important. That's what causes this kind of a V shape to happen. And on the other side, it's a V shape, but going the other direction. So that it's kind of neat. I mean, it's it's def it's a lot different because this one all of the the hots and colds always stay going in whichever direction that they were headed into right so 
the hots were going to the right and the colds were going to the left. And that just happens all the way down in a spiral. Um, this one, they come together. And so you get this like rainbow stripe going through the bracelet. So that's kind of neat. And again, relatively simple straightforward kind of thing I, I in fact because we aren't using as much footage um this part here is not sped up as fast so you can really kind of take your time and see what's going on and um get the gist of what's happening so yeah so basically on either side of, of our loop we're ending up with two of these diamonds right and the diamond is as far as we can go without it starting to come in and become a, like a flat regular bracelet, right? So once you have those diamonds, then you can bring the two sides together and then you can create a diamond in the strings that are coming together. And then you flip it over, do the same thing, and then you have the other side. Tubes are a bit more time consuming, by the way. The, the reason for that is you'll spend a lot of time shifting it in the clip. So I recommend if you're going to do it, have one of these big bulldog clips because it's just easier to keep flipping it around. So here we are. This, is, this would be like making it like a double wide, right? So you have like almost like two bracelets coming together into a thing and um yeah so and with this we did the thing where it's like a dark light and the rest are dark and then the light comes through the middle so that way it sort of keeps that same darks on the outside and and the lights in the middle um thing kind of going on um and it kind of splits it or whatever so yeah that that's kind of a thing that's that's there um, but yeah, and this part seems to go really kind of quickly because it's nice, longer, straight rows. So that was, that made this really kind of fun is there's, there's chunks that, you know, you get done with a whole big block all at once. All right, so then the green comes over top of the purple. And then the blues can come out and do the same thing again. And you'll you kind of see the way like I chose to do this kind of helps speed things along because now I get to do a nice long straight row of the lighter color. When I go back the other way, I it's all just straight the darker color and then the lighter color and then it's the darker color again. Again, just trying to be efficient. Nothing too crazy, but, you know, it kind of helps a little bit. I could have done the green right after this, like just the little box part, but because I don't have the, the stuff outside of it, it doesn't seem like a smart move so now i'm going to take the whole thing i flip it over and um like I, the way i've got this squeezed is really about trying to get that first knot in really tight and keep the the tube really really good like yeah see this i end up choosing to kind of yeah this way turn i like i didn't like how it was going to be for the other way so trying to clip it like this, as long as I get those two sides really, really close together, that's the thing. All right. So that first knot is the important part. It's already now kind of officially sort of a tube. Everything else now is helping to hold that first bit together and uh, yeah but here this is I'm already starting to venture off into a error 
because, and what I wasn't thinking about, I was picturing that the other side was going to do the same thing as the first side where the purple came down and whatever. That's wrong. It's wrong. I have to take out a bunch of knots as a result of this. I'm not sure exactly when it hit me that I was so wrong. Um, but yeah, I have to torch all this. So here's, here's uh, the regular part. This is, this is how it goes. So this side, the B is going in the other direction. Um, I hadn't quite worked out the the best method for this part here. Uh, I kind of worked that out a little bit later. We are come in from one side and then do the middle one. And uh, yeah. But yeah. At this point, you will be able to see exactly kind of what's going on with each of the sides and just kind of go from there from what what happens with each of them so at this point it becomes much much easier but yeah i couldn't see the v shape from the pattern that we made because we only did it for the other side so that was that was partly my fault you know i get it But yeah, at this point, it's just doing like that. Like there's just roll a little bit. Mind you, at that point, I was using, I don't even know where that other clip went. Oh, here it is. I was using these kind of clips. I've got some felt in here because it was starting to get a little bit rusty. But um, I was using one of these kind of clips. Again, switching over to this made so much more sense. It's just easier to work with be able to rotate it and kind of move it around because you'll rotate it a lot there's a lot of that in this and then yeah it's at that point once once you kind of have it going you can just kind of rotate it and you start at the highest point wherever it's not there's nothing going on up high just figure out where you are and which direction you have to go and bring it down and then rotate it find another high point and bring it down um, there is no real methodical way to it because um, you'll have points high points on either side of the bracelet at any given point so until it basically there's a high point and it comes all the way around to a point um and then again you just go back to the high point and you just keep bringing that down um i hope that makes sense i in i know in my head it makes perfect sense um but try to watch as we go along you can see like now the blue is at the lower point so we have spin it around and see that purple is up higher well it's purple and yellow so at that point you have to determine which side is going where but that that corner there was up higher than all the other stuff that was already previously worked out so we just kind of bring it down at that point i could have brought the yellow over top of the blue didn't matter there it's seriously at this point progress forward is progress forward it doesn't matter which side you choose to to work on more um but yeah that's that's kind of a thing so yeah now we bring the yellow down and then that means we can then bring the blue over top of the orange And I did try to kind of stay concentrated in an area at a time because obviously rotating it a lot is every time you're rotating it, you're taking time away from actually nodding and you're just spending time rotating. So um, 
I did try to concentrate on one area at a time. Oh, and here I just get, I already worked out. Do the one row of purple, then bring in the other one. Now this light purple will come all the way to the point of where it meets up with the other one. And then bring in the other dark because now as I bring the light across, it'll go all the way to the end. And then the last one is dark until it gets to the light, one not, and then dark again. So this, this was my most efficient way of tackling these little arrow things or V's or whatever they are. So again, as long as you can make a chevron, you can make this, right? This is not too bad, really. Yeah, I kind of see at this point, I'm going ahead and bringing those blues in. I'm going to have to still mess with that center part. But again, it was about trying to concentrate on one area at a time, trying to make it make sense and um, trying to be efficient. So. And the only difference about the other thing is at this point, I have to bring the light blue over just one knot and then the darker blue again, just one knot. It just sort of a, it just doesn't feel like the most efficient way of doing it, but it did help because I was able to do an area that I already had the thing turned to. So. So now the high point, everything came around all the way down to that blue. Now at this point, this is the highest area of everything. And as we work this part out, um, we start to have two high points, one on either side, where basically the green and the orange come together are two new high points um, once this, this diamond gets made. So then you, again, you just choose a side to work from. And uh, you kind of go from there. But yeah, I, again, I really like this bracelet. It's, it's got so much potential. There's so much th cool stuff. If you did, did this in fading colors and stuff, that would look really super cool. Obviously, you can do the rainbow in so many kind of different ways. You can do pastels or really dark or, you know, whatever you can. There's potential here to do a bunch of neat stuff. Makes great key change if you don't want to have to come down as far. Um, makes cool chapstick holders, all that kind of stuff. So you might need to test and see whether or not the string you're using will be big enough for a chapstick holder just because the 36 works for me might not work for you because of the floss I'm using. This is not DMC. So just kind of test it out for yourself. Maybe you do a little wider, which is, you know, maybe you, instead of th uh, three strings for each color, maybe you end up going with four strings for each color. So not sure. What is that, 24 strings? No, this is 36. So uh, 12, 24. 48 strings so which seems kind of like it would be really pretty big like that might be a lot bigger than a chapstick but it depends again it really depends on the string that you're using so I, I can't say and again it's just finding where you are keeping them going over and under and then wherever they join up doing that thing too so yeah Hopefully you guys really enjoy this. Thank you to my Patreon and my YouTube members for making these tutorials possible. I can't do it without you guys. And um, yeah, as always, don't get your strings in a bunch. <laughs>